Everybody, it's Tyler here at Kelvin University with Noah, Eli, and Quinn, a team number 2075 Enigma. This team has been absolutely lights out, part of the number one alliance as we go into alliance uh, and the elimination matches here. And you got to check out this robot here. We're going to be, of course, talking about uh, their flail intake that they have uh, into their uh, indexer that they have, shooter, and a really cool, unique climber. I can't wait to show here. All coming up on Behind the Bumpers. Your destination for first content, updates, and gaming. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. First Updates Now is supported by Stryker Careers. Apply the skills you gained as a first student or mentor and help change the world at Stryker. Stryker is the top career choice for many of those in first because of their commitment to innovation and saving lives. Learn more about the incredible culture at Stryker and view their thousands of positions available around the world at careers.stryker.com. Competition season is here. Head on over to thebluelines.com to catch all the events each week. Don't forget to submit your clips of the week to discord.gg forward slash first updates now. Vote in the FRC Top 25 and play in our free fantasy pick'em. Catch fun shows live on Mondays and Tuesdays at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. So Noah, we're going to start out with the uh, intake on your robot. Talk to me about some of the uh, design process, especially when you're looking at like material for your foil intake. Like, How did you come to that decision and uh, talk to me a little about uh, what's gone into it. So when we were originally starting this, we had a totally different design. We wanted to pick up bouncing balls as well as lower balls. So we went with a belt type uh, an intake that would basically have belts that would rotate around and pick up balls on top with Velcro. And we originally took parts off of some of our other robots to test this. We started out with wood to try to get everything uh, situated and then we started testing a bit more and started switching out of that thinking that it wasn't really picking up our balls we weren't really doing too well so later we decided we would go with a uh, beater intake with these so we originally went with this because we went with it a few years ago and we knew it worked well with the balls that were similar to this so we decided to use this except we added these flappers to slap bouncing balls down because we figured out that if we had that, it would fall down a lot easier for us to pick up. And when it came for materials, we were deciding between, uh, really we just wanted to do Lexan, but we made it a bit too, we're trying to lose weight on these, so we made these a bit too thin and then that really uh, snapped on our robot, so then we had to make it thicker in a lot of places to protect it. We learned that uh, yesterday when a lot of this snapped. Can we see your intake come down and we'll take a look at how that, how that is uh, deploying and showing off? So we also have added these, which are basically to when we intake the ball they're to keep this from falling out of our robot, as well as like feeding it into our singleizer which I'll get into that uh, right now, actually. Yeah, let's talk about it. So we originally have used this before, and we, so we originally have used this before on a couple of our other robots when we went with the beater because we needed to make the balls file in one by one if we picked up two at a time. So we kind of knew what we were going to do with that. We just had to work on our 3D printed mounts because since we have access to a lot of things, we did decide to print a lot of things because it was a lot easier for us to do for a material and it was stronger. So we really just came up with a 3D printed design for this and went with wheels with motors attached to it. Well, let's keep moving on. We're going to go into your uh, indexing system and up into your shooter. Uh, so talk to me a little bit more. What's uh, gone into that? How has that uh, been created for this season? So the indexer design for this was pretty straightforward. We took the design that we had from previous year and based our design off of that. Our previous design had belts on it, but we realized once we did some more design work that given that we only had to hold two balls at once, we didn't actually need any belts. What we did from there is we decided to use a single wheel design, which allowed us to greatly reduce the complexity and weight of this mechanism. Uh, the one problem we found with this, though, was that with a single wheel, sometimes we would have this slight dead zone between the shooter portion and the indexer portion of our robots. What we found is a great way to solve that problem is this four inch Andy Mark compliant wheel that we've cut off most of the outside and made it have these flaps on it. This actually hits our aluminum plate down here, but it forces it back out 
when it's not hitting that plate and it allows it to shoot the ball up into our shooter much better and makes this whole process completely controlled. With that uh, in mind, it allowed us to completely control the ball's path and we didn't have any spots where if a ball, say, got in the wrong spot, we were kind of screwed until we could get another ball. Moving on to our shooter, we've got a really small belt down here that allows us to get the ball up to speed before coming into the shooter mechanism. That is powered by a Neo 550 motor with a four to one gearbox on it. Then we went with a dual flywheel design. We did this because we were really concerned with the balls bouncing out of the hub on the field. After some testing we did with a hub that we mocked up at our build space. We have these mounted on an adjustable hood to allow us to get a wide range of shots so we, so we could shoot from anywhere on the field was the goal behind that. Uh, both of these are powered by Falcon motors and we did a lot of testing with this with a wooden prototype to figure out what kind of gear ratio we wanted and what kind of ratios we wanted between the speeds and, of the lower and upper flywheels. So yeah, let me ask you on uh, talking about this, uh, the belt that you added uh, for that, what have you actually seen like, is that kind of essentially like kind of pre pulling the ball in so you're not uh, lowering the RPM of your shooter that much? Like what is the purpose of having something like that? Yeah, that totally helps. We didn't have any weight on our flywheel this year, which we did in previous years. Yeah. And we wanted that because it made our spin up much faster and allowed us to use a RPM that we thought was better on our Falcon or, or our gear ratio, I guess. Um, so we found that by powering that off of a, in a separate motor, we could get it up to speed without lowering our flywheel speed and allowed us to kind of have an additional way to control this. And, uh, you know, for example, maybe if the ball was spinning, rotating in this, it gives it a little bit of time to get that rotation out of it before going into our shooter. Well, let's try to wrap up your robot, uh, hand it off to Quinn, who's gonna be talking about your uh, climbing mechanism. Uh, Quinn, I see a lot of tape measures and a lot of uh, individual motors for each one. I don't think I've seen a team that has uh, four independently articulating uh, parts for their climbers. So talk to me more about what's gone into this and I'd uh, love to hear like, what were maybe some other concepts that came up with before you landed on something like this as well? So a couple of the other uh, designs we considered were like a bendable Luxan climber and a like just a regular telescoping tubes. And so the concept of this is very similar to just the regular telescoping tubes. We just use tape measures to deploy the hooks instead. So. Uh, with this tape measure, there's a couple different moving parts, well, lots of moving parts, but a couple different moving axes, you, you, as you say. Uh, so we have these compliant wheels here. That's what drives it out. Each of these modules can ro rotate, and you see the outer ones can rotate together and the inner ones rotate together. And so we have motors to drive those. And then for the actual spooling of it and pulling up, we have a spooler down at the bottom of the robot, and that cable is routed all the way up to the uh, hooks. And so what I think is interesting about this climber as well is there's only a single motor for that spool. And so we only have one rotating part there. And when one, so basically when the outers are moving out, the inners are moving in. And when the inners are moving uh, out, the outers are moving in. And so you're probably wondering when we have it in the starting position like this, how do we have these all in? So what we ended up doing is putting a hook on our spooling mechanism at the bottom here. That way we could uh, change the direction that the uh, cable spooled to start with. So halfway through the spooling of it, we have it wrap around a hook so it comes around backwards, and then we can pull it all in. So you'll see as, uh, initial, as the robot initializes for climbing, these all of the hooks will go out to the midpoint, and then the inner ones will continue going out, but the outer ones will start going back in. Let's take a look and see that deploy, and uh, give us a little narration as it's going on. So as it starts to deploy, you'll see all the hooks are coming out. And then once they got to the midpoint, those ones came back in. So like I said, these are driven out by these motors. And these are uh, just compliant wheels that push up against these. And so basically, the idea of that is we always keep these cables tensioned. So even if you push back in, it should come back out because these motors are pushing it back out. Well, 2075 Enigma, uh, what an awesome robot you've demonstrated here. The climber is so unique, but so effective at the same time. That's really cool to see. So we wish you best of luck here at this event, of course, but looking forward to seeing your performance in future events, hopefully at FIM States, and uh, who knows, world championships as well, too. Good luck the rest of the way. Thank you.
Thanks to Stryker Careers for their support in this video. Apply the skills you gained as a first student or mentor and help change the world at Stryker. Stryker is a top career choice for many of those in first because of their commitment to innovation and saving lives. Learn more about the incredible culture at Stryker and view their thousands of positions available around the world at careers.stryker.com. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now. And check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.